So let me do that too. Okay, so here we go. So I just wanted to make sure that we all feel really confident moving forward because today in class, we're adding a whole new layer to your understanding of trigonometry. So we're gonna move beyond the right triangle trigonometry and we're gonna see that we can actually solve for missing sides and angles when the triangles are not just right triangles. So Ms. Hong and I both thought it would be really smart to just review this with those of you who really need to have that, that fundamentals just down, right? Have a solid foundation to build off of. All right, so at the top, I'm just gonna remind you that we always start off by writing Sokotoa. So ka toa. And really that framework, it guides us to see which ratio is appropriate. So remember that all of those ratios are constants. They are set in stone because our triangles are really uh, gonna be similar. So we know that their corresponding sides are gonna be proportional, right? They'll have that same ratio. All right, so first thing that I encourage all of my kids to do is I say, well, let's mark the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. It's our longest side, our largest side. So here is our hypotenuse. So by marking that side, there's really no confusion then. Let me just let a student back in one sec. So there's no confusion as to whether that's an adjacent side or an opposite side. The adjacent side and the opposite side are always the legs of the right triangle. So the legs are always those perpendicular sides. So here's my hypotenuse, no question about it. But from over here where it's the 62 degree angle, here would be my opposite side where U is, my adjacent would be the F. But from where the 28 is, my opposite side would be the F, the adjacent would be the U. So we change our perspective based on which one is the reference angle. So from 62, I'm saying, what is sine 62? So from 62, sine is the so, let me write that, that's the so part. So we're looking at the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse. So from the 62, here's my opposite, here's my hypotenuse. So U over N. Okay, next I'm saying, well, what about cosine 28? So then I'm looking at the ka right here. Right? It guides me to see that, okay, I'm looking at the ratio of the adjacent side to its hypotenuse. So right here is the 28. The adjacent side is the one that it's right next to, right here, the U, right? It's the side that it's connected to that's not the hypotenuse. So we see, oh, well, that's also U, and then the hypotenuse is N. So it's actually the same ratio as the one that we just saw for sine. So I just wanna remind you of something that we addressed earlier in this unit is that sine 62 ends up being the same thing as cosine 28. And the reason that is, is because these angles are complements. Their measures add to 90 degrees. So let me draw my little arrows here and here and just write complements. So remember that complementary angles have measures that together sum to 90 degrees. So sine 62, watch what happens. So from here, 62, here's my opposite over hypotenuse. And that's gonna be the same ratio when I switch over to this vantage and say, well, what's cosine adjacent to hypotenuse? They had the same ratio. So this would be true for any angles in these two slots that are complements, that have measures that sum to 90. All right, the last one I'm asking is tangent and of 28. So from 28, here's my opposite, here's my adjacent, right? I'm looking at that TOA part right here. So opposite adjacent it is side F over U. 
All right, everyone doing okay to hear? Okay, so we're gonna practice it one more time. I've just labeled it slightly differently. So here I didn't throw any numbers at you. I used all variables. So here again, good rule of thumb, always get in that good habit of writing out the so ka toa. Okay, and then opposite the right angle will always be the longest side. That is your hypotenuse. Okay, so then again, from where A is, this would be the opposite, this would be the adjacent, but from where B is, here is my opposite, here is my adjacent. So if I'm looking at tangent B, right, I'm looking at that toa part. So I'm looking at the opposite over adjacent sides from right here. So from where my finger is, where B is, here is my opposite, here is my adjacent. Opposite and adjacent are always the legs. They are always the perpendicular sides. So X over Y. All right, cosine A. So from where the A is, I'm looking at the ka. So from A, I'm looking at the adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's my adjacent, right? It's the side that it's touching, that it's connected to over the hypotenuse. So X to Z. Adjacent to hypotenuse. And then I'm saying, well, how about sine A? So I'm looking at the so. So from where A is, here is my opposite and here is my hypotenuse. So Y to Z. And then just to tuck it in, because I think it's important to keep pointing this out, right? We know that sine A, so where sine A is right here, that would be the same as cosine B. Let me show you why. So sine A, here's the opposite, here's the hypotenuse. And when I switch my vantage to B, right, the complement of A, cosine would be Y to Z, adjacent to hypotenuse. So sine A is the same as cosine B. I also know that sine B would be the same as cosine A right? They are complements. They're complementary angles. Their ratios will match. All right, so next up I'm saying, well, find each ratio without a calculator. So notice that all of these angles that I'm giving you are 30s, 60s, or 45s. So we're really building off of our knowledge of special right triangles, the 45, 45, 90, and the 30, 60, 90. Okay, but again, good habits. Let's write that Soka Toa at the tippy top. All right, there we go. So if I say, what's sine 30? And I'm saying, don't touch your calculator. Well, let's draw ourselves a right triangle. And I'm making that reference angle 30 degrees right there. So I know that other angle is 60, right? It's really a 30, 60, 90, but I'm just visualizing the 30 degree angle as my reference angle here. So remember that whenever it's a 30, 60, 90, we know that our short leg is X. So right here would be X. The longer leg would be X root three. So opposite the 60 would be the X root three. And the hypotenuse is the two X right here. Okay, well, I want sine, right? So I'm interested in the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? The so, opposite hypotenuse. So that is right here, opposite here, hypotenuse here. So no matter what I make X, the hypotenuse is gonna be double. So if I make this a one, then this side would be two, for example. 
If I make this side two, this would be four. If I make this three, this would be six. So no matter what, I know that it's gonna to reduce to this one to two ratio. So when we say what's sine 30, well, that ratio will be one to two always. That's a constant, one to two. Again, I'm focusing on the opposite and the hypotenuse. So those two measures right there. So again, no matter what I define X as, the hypotenuse will be double and it will reduce to a one to two ratio. All right, tan, tan 45 is always my favorite because it's, it's easy to see. So let me draw that out right here. So here's my right triangle. Here's my 45 degree reference angle. So I know that with a 45, 45, 90 triangle or isosceles right triangle, my two legs are the same and the hypotenuse is X root two. Well, with tangent, I'm interested in the TOA, right? I'm interested in the ratio of opposite to adjacent. So those are always the two legs. So no matter what I call one leg, the other leg is gonna be the same. So if I call this one and I call this then one, then I know that my two legs, they're both one. And again, I'm looking at the opposite and the adjacent sides. So I labeled them both as one, but I could have labeled them both as two. I could have labeled them both as three. I could label them both as 10, right? It doesn't matter. Whenever I have something stacked over itself, it's always going to reduce to just one. So 10, 45, that ratio is constant. It's always going to be just exactly one. All right, cosine 30. So again, I'm just looking at this triangle over here. Let me redraw that. So here my angle is 30 degrees. So again, if I label my sides, right, I know that this is x, this is x root 3, and this is 2x. Okay, but this time I'm interested in the ka, the adjacent to hypotenuse. So I'm interested in the adjacent to hypotenuse right there. So if I know, let's say that I call x one, then this side right here would be root three. And if this is one, mark that, then this would be two. Right, but I didn't have to make it one, I could make it anything. So if I made this two, this would be two root three, and this would be four. If I made this three, this would be three root three, and this would be six. So again, I'm really picturing similar right triangles. I can scale them up or I can shrink them down, but I know how their sides are related. So when I say, well, what's cosine 30? I'm looking at the ratio of the adjacent side to its hypotenuse. So it will always be root three to two. So even if I had picked a different measure to start off with, so let's say, for example, I started with a two here, this would have been a two root three, and this would be a four. Well, that would reduce to root three to two as the ratio. So that ratio stays constant, no matter how much I scale up or shrink down this diagram right here. All right, next up, tangent 60. So let me draw my triangle a different way like this. So here, the angle that I'm focusing on is the 60. Okay, so I know that this angle would be 30. So opposite the 30 would be the X. Opposite the 60 would be the X root three and opposite the 90 is the two X. But what am I interested in here? I'm looking at the TOA. I'm looking at the opposite over the adjacent side. So if I make X, say I make it one, let's be easy on ourselves. Then the opposite side, right? That longer leg would just be root three. Hypotenuse would be two. But again, I didn't have to choose one. If I had made this two, this would be four. This would be two root three. 
So what am I interested in for tangent? The opposite over the adjacent. So I'm looking at, well, root three to one, anything over one is just itself. So that resolves really nicely. We didn't have to rationalize any denominator. It just simplifies to root three. Okay, but again, let's say that I picked a different number. If I had picked two here to start, this would have been two root three and two root three over two would still reduce back to root three. So what we're trying to really stress is that whenever we see sine of an angle measure or cosine or tangent of an angle measure, it's really telling us that's a ratio. That's a ratio if we're using sine of the opposite side to its hypotenuse. For cosine, it's the adjacent side to its hypotenuse. And if we're using tangent, it's the opposite to adjacent. And again, hypotenuse is always opposite that right angle. It's our longest side in any right triangle. The opposite and the adjacent sides are the two legs, the two perpendicular sides. All right, so now at the bottom, here we're going to actually use these ratios to write an equation and solve for x. So let me zoom in just a little bit tighter to here. All right, so here in the first one, so I know that right here is my reference angle, it's 27 degrees. Okay, you know I love good habits. Let's write out the so, ka, and toa. All right, so in relation to the 27 degrees, which sides do I have? Well, remember opposite that right angle is always the hypotenuse, okay? So then opposite the 27 right here, that's the opposite side, right? There's the O, okay? I don't have the adjacent side. That would have been this one right here. So when I look at my options, I'm using sine because I have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So I'm gonna say that sine 27 equals X over 25. Okay, I want to visualize it as a proportion because it is one, right? We're saying that this ratio is equal to this ratio. So now we cross multiply and we get that X is equal to 25 times sine 27. So let me show you how to plug that in. I grabbed one of the scientific calculators from school, which is what most of you have. So let me show you just a few settings. You wanna make sure that it's in degree mode. So mine is, it shows me that right here, DEG degree mode. Okay, I could also hit this button right here, the DRG. So if I do that, you can see that it pops up. It shows me that it's in degree mode right there, right? If it wasn't, I would just scroll over to which one I want. And we always want degree mode. I've also shown my students how to round to four decimal spots. That's the nearest 10,000th. So to do that, I need to go to where it says fix. So I hit second decimal right here. So when I hit second decimal, watch what shows up. So on my home screen, I see, okay, F is for float where it's not gonna round at all. It's just gonna use whatever space it has in the calculator screen. And I want four spots, so I'm using my arrows to pick where I want it to round. So I use my arrows and I said, oh, I want four. And when I hit enter, it's going to say, okay, we'll round to four spots. All right, so then when I type in, I'm going to say 25 times sine 27. Good habits. If we open parentheses, we want to close them. So when I hit enter, I get that x is about 11.3498. Let me write that down. 11.3498. That is my missing side. All right, let's do that same process for B. So from where that 34 is, my reference angle right there, which sides do we have? Well, opposite the right angle is always the hypotenuse. Okay, and then what other side do we have? We have the other side that it's touching, that it's connected to. So this is the adjacent side right there. 
So which one am I going to use? I'm going to use cosine. So I know that cosine 34 is equal to my adjacent 19 over my hypotenuse, which is x. Here's my equation. I want to visualize it as a proportion. So I'm going to put it over 1, and then I'm going to cross multiply. So I have x times cosine 34 is equal to 19. Divide away the cosine 34. And then I put it in my calculator. So I'm looking at, let me clear that out, 19 divided by cosine 34. Again, good habits. If I open parentheses, I want to close them. So I hit enter. And I get that x is about 22.9181. So that's my missing side. So we're using our ratios to build a proportion and solve for missing side. I gave you guys one of each where x was on top in part A and on bottom in part B. All right, got two more to do. So here, what about when we want an angle? So I'm saying use ratios to write an equation and solve for theta, solve for the angle. So remember here, I'm using so ka toa, just like that. Okay, so ka toa. So from theta, so from right here, from theta, which sides do we have, right? We have an opposite side right here, and we have an adjacent side right here. I don't have the hypotenuse, right? That's my longest side opposite the right angle. I don't have that. So when I build my equation, I know that tangent theta would give me a ratio of opposite to adjacent. But if I want that angle measure, right? If I want theta, I need to take the inverse of tangent along with its ratio, and it's going to pump out the angle measure that I want. So when I type this in, I have to hit second tangent. So second tangent, right? It looks kind of funny. It looks like it's an exponent, but it reads as inverse. So inverse of tan, and then 10 divided by 11 will get me an angle measure of about 42.2737. Let me write that down. So theta would be about 42.2737 and degrees. Okay, so now in the second one right here, same idea. So from where theta is, which sides do we have? So I can see that opposite the right angle, I do have a hypotenuse here. And then opposite theta right here, 12, is my opposite side. So when I run through my options of sine, cosine, tangent, I'm looking at the so, right? I'm looking at the opposite to the hypotenuse. So I would say sine theta produces a ratio of 12 to 17 but I want the angle. So I'm gonna take the inverse of sine with that ratio, and it's gonna give me the angle measure. Okay, so here, let me type that in. So second sine, that gets me the inverse of sine, and I'm gonna type in 12 divided by 17, and it's gonna give me an angle measure of about, 44.9009 degrees. All right, you guys, that's all I had prepared, but I'm, I'm also totally willing to answer any questions that you guys may have. So are there, um, are there any questions? You guys have any questions for me? Yeah. 